Medical experts say categorizing COVID-19 cases helps to curb the spread of the virus more effectively. Now, it's said to give a clearer picture of what drives transmission within each cluster. Singapore currently has four categories. Imported cases, community cases, migrant workers residing in dormitories and those living outside of dormitories. Vanessa Lim tells us more. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. The more we can define you know, clusters of transmission then, and we can understand what drives those transmission in, in those clusters, then, then we can devise more um, uh, cost-effective tools or approaches to prevent uh, virus transmission and, and new cases from appearing. To what happens in the dormitories and all that may not necessarily apply to what happens in the community-based transmission. Very much of it depends on what, you know, the kind of circumstances that lead to, uh, you know, one person transmitting the virus to another. For instance, in uh, places where they eat or they canteen or where they dine, if that's the, the case, then you just have to stop those um, you know, gatherings from happening. Professor Uri, do you have any concrete examples of how having different approaches for different groups have been more effective? We, we have not had a lot of time to look back and, and really do some hardcore analysis on you know, which measures have worked, which have not. Um, so, and, and I think that that's a, an important exercise that we hopefully we will be able to get down to doing uh, once we, you know, manage to fight this fire. Um, but those are important lessons because chances are this, this um, COVID-19 will come back. Now, besides community cases and those living in foreign worker dormitories, there is also a category for migrant workers not living in the dormitories. What's the reason behind having a separate category for them? I mean, why not include them as community cases? I think it really depends on what Ministry of Health finds, whether the, these cases are acquiring their infection from their workplace. They could be mixing with the people living in the dorms and that's why they get it. Um, or indeed, the you know, Ministry of Health managed to, manages to trace this to, um, say, market or hawker centres or something like that, right? So then if, if it's latter, then truly they should be considered uh, community cases. But if it's the former, then it makes no sense to consider these as community cases because they, are, they acquired the infection from contact with other uh, migrant workers, right? Does this mean that when the number of COVID-19 cases in the community falls to single digits, we can see restrictions for this group being lifted, even if restrictions for those living in dormitories continue? Yes, uh, yes, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, no point keeping the community locked down when the transmission is not in a community, but in the dorms, right? And the dorms are already still um, isolated. Right? Um, and while the problems are dealt with in the dorms, I mean, you cannot keep holding the rest of the country back until we have a vaccine and we can vaccinate enough people and all that until we have drugs this this virus will come back so the, the more we can understand what works versus what doesn't work then then the better we will be the next time this virus comes back